Welcome back to Exploring with Emma and Stu. And today we brought you back to Suffolk, where we're going to be taking a little look at a rifle range, which we believe probably dates back to at least World War One, don't we? We have just been to told by an information, well, information from a local, actually, that these were built in 1911. Yes. Yeah, he actually used to do a bit of shooting here once upon a time. Yeah. And that's why he'd come back to visit. Mm. Um, but there's a little bit to see, um, but what there is to see is quite interesting. It's very yeah. interesting. So we're going to get cracking and uh, we'll have a bit of a tour, shall we? So the whole of the area here in front of me was actually part of that rifle range with the massive mounds over the back there where basically the bullets would have sort of uh, embedded into when they'd been fired. And uh, just to the left of me here, we've actually got the, the actual shooting range. Uh, quite interesting features in there. We'll take you for a look. So here we have the main features of the rifle range. Just here, we've got the targets, which we'll tell you a little bit more about later. This part would have been the hut where the people operating those targets would have sheltered because of course, the people shooting the rifles would have been above and over here shooting out this way. Uh, we've got a few little features here, like some little benches, which are actually pretty strong still. <laughs> and uh, just above me, you can see this must have had electric because they've got uh, little clips for sort of wires and things like that. Um, Got actually some quite nice ornate little decorations here. Um, of course this place has been quite heavily adapted because it was reused for many decades after the war but uh, we're going to see if we can get Liam to come over and explain a little bit more about these targets. So I've brought Liam along because he knows a little bit yeah. more about how these work so I'm going to put him on the spot to try and explain how these used to work. So I've got, a, I've got a rough idea so I did once very briefly have a go operating these. And basically the way it works, you've got, by the sounds of it, there was two targets here, one on either side, and they'd almost go, well, up and down on a pulley system. So you'd have some chains going around wheels and you'd yank down on them and then it would be like on a weight system. So the target would go up above. Obviously people would fire over your head and you'd hear the bullets cracking over your head. Um, the bullets would land in the butt stop at the back there and then you would pull the target back down again. You'd probably record the, where the bullet holes were so you can tell the score to the firing actual people that are shooting because they're probably too far away to actually see the tiny bullet holes themselves. Um, and then you would maybe put a sticker over the bullet holes and then you'd wind it back up again so it could be used again. Right. I don't know whether they had stickers and like radios to World talk one, to the but... yeah, but oh, okay, that's then. the idea roughly. Right. See, Liam's explained that probably an awful lot better than what I could, so I appreciate that. <laughs> I've tried. <laughs> but uh, anyway, there's a few more other features to look at, isn't there? Yeah. So um, we're going to carry on down this sort of gallery here and have a look at something else. So uh, thanks to Liam for that little bit of information about how this pulley system works. Of course, I wouldn't have been able to explain it anywhere near as good as that. But back to the actual rifle range. Now, of course, uh, this was used during World War I and World War II. Of course, they were practicing to go out to the battlefields of France. Um, you know, we're talking about the Somme, things like that. And in fact, this whole area of Rendlesham Forest, we believe, was used as a, a bit of a practice um, system. There would have been trenches and all those sort of things as well, where they would have been practicing to go out to the battlefields and obviously fight. Um, but uh, there's a little bit more to see around here. So what we're going to do is we're going to take you just down there in the trees, where there's a little bit of a feature which we think you might like to have a look at. So before we go and have a look at the little feature through there in the trees, um, there's actually a lot more to see of the pulley system around here. And I think it's worth um, Stu maybe explaining a little bit of that to you. And here I am. I don't know where I've been. I, haven't been, I've, <laughs> I must have been behind the camera. I don't know. Probably. Um, but what we have come to at the moment are these, which is actually really good. It's actually the pulley system. Yeah, this is quite actually quite complete. That's why we thought yeah. we'd just pause and take and a look. And we're just having a look here and it looked like... I don't know, it looks like a line of handle and it would have pulled that, it would have turned that wheel like Liam was saying yeah. about the chains. Liam explained it so much better. Yeah. But it's really nice to see. Look at this. Look at how complete 
these old pulleys still look, they even turn They actually still, still turn, that that's actually... It is quite impressive actually. It's amazing to think that this is still here and we are in the middle of the forest really, aren't we? Yeah. We've actually been here before, if you've been following us for a while, you may recall we took a quick look at it a few years ago. Yeah. Um, but uh, we actually got lost trying to find it, yeah, <laughs> even to, though uh, we've been before. Yeah, and I think <laughs> if you go over to Liam's video and probably a little bit of Ben's, they might even say we got yeah, lost. because we've got Ben here as well with us, yeah. who we'll have a look at later. <laughs> uh, we're going to go and see him in a second. But um, Emma was talking about the, like a little hut or a little barrack area or whatever it was in the bushes. So mm -hmm. what we're going to go and do now, we're, we're going to go down there and have a quick look. And I think that's where Ben and Liam actually yeah, are. Yeah, they're already checking it out, so let's go find them. <laughs> Just through the trees and brambles here, we've actually got quite a large building. Um, we're not overly sure what it is, but what we are sure is that we're joined by Ben from Ben's Life. Hello, how's it going? <laughs> anyway, so um, I'll tell you, you've been having a little look at this. Um, I have. What, do you know what it is? Because we're not overly um, sure. Well, at first I thought it was storage, but then we saw these uh, holes down here, which look like they would have been some sort of like sewer ridge. Possibly. Mm, possibly. I mean, yeah. that could have been a, some sort of drainage for sewage or it could have just been sort of generally drainage. But um, what we can see is that if you look really closely, there's an absolute mishmash of brickwork here where there was clearly some more windows along here. Especially with this one up here. This looks like this may have been another entrance into the place because it I looks so. the rough sort of size of the door we walked through. Hmm. Um, and it's just been patched up, bodged up. Yeah. Now I'm going to go out on a limb here. And I'm going to say that I actually think that this wall here had quite a large entrance, maybe even some sort of vehicle storage, possibly at some point. Um, although this is quite an old window, it could even be as old as World War II, maybe dating back to that age. I don't really know. But no, this was probably just some sort of like crew room where um, the people who were using the rifle range probably sort of sheltered, I suppose. I, so, uh, I also think that this roof isn't original either. No. This has definitely been done definitely at some point. definitely not original, yeah. But like we said, this place was used in the 90s, or up until the 90s. So I imagine it's been heavily adapted over the, uh, the decades, but there's not really much to see in here. We've got quite a strange looking floor. It looks like some sort of pavement slabs, <laughs> which uh, that's clearly not original. You say, you say that, but then when it comes to like toilet blocks and stuff, mm. that is the kind of floor and I Possibly. imagine you would see in that sort yeah. of era. But then if we look outside, there's something which would make me think this probably wasn't used for ablutions. But we'll go outside and we'll have a look. Now, just behind the structure that we've just taken you in is a very small but interesting little structure here. And, um, well, I was rather hoping that Stu was going to take us for a little tour around it. But I'm not really sure where he is. Oh, there he is. I'm in the toilet. <laughs> what have we just, got here, Steve? Just having a look. Um, we've got some uh, where the pipes, sewage pipes would have came out, if you can see just down here. So what we're looking at clearly is just... Chemical toilets, yeah, maybe. Very small. couple of little chemical toilets. Yeah. Uh, these don't date back to World War One, obviously. Obviously not. But what um, I was thinking of what Ben and you were saying in the, in, the, in the hut that we was in a minute ago about the ablutions, what made you maybe think that these weren't... Mm -hmm. Maybe this is when the gun butts were still in practice in the 70s and they were built and then this was adapted, maybe. Possibly. I'm just wondering if that was all the toilets were ripped out for storage. Could have been. And then toilets were placed yeah. here maybe it's a it's a theory Absolutely. but um it does actually look like we have a male and female oh, uh, maybe that's quite generous of them. so we've got one there and one yeah. there um obviously it might not be a male and female it might be just two cubicles there we go there you go but, so uh, yeah just chemical toilets uh like you were saying yeah oh. absolutely but as you can see we've got the ground that's raised up going over to the sand pits where the bullets used to hit but um other than that, really, I don't know if there's much we can more see. Uh, so I think we're going to round this up. We'll go and say goodbye to Joe. Not, oh, no, Joe's. Joe's away at the moment. He's in Belfast. Liam and Ben. We've uh, finished this uh, gumbutt. 
Is that right? Rifle range, yeah. Rifle range. <laughs> uh, Liam's come with us. Um, obviously, Thanks he's on a little. Uh, you're always. more than welcome. And we've also got Ben from Ben's Life. Check out his video on this because he would have done exactly the same thing, and Liam would have done a nice little vlog. But Emma, what do you yeah, think? Well, it's Good? been a nice return, and again to have a, a bit more of a look at this this yeah, time, didn't we? Absolutely. And now we know a little bit more information about how it works and everything. Uh, thanks to Liam. Yep. Yeah. And well, also with the local <laughs> people, local um, over the last That's couple it. of years, we've had a bit of an approach from some local people that have told us a bit about this area. So that was really quite helpful. So yeah. thanks for that. I want to say thank you to Ben as well for taking us a little tour absolutely. around the little building yeah. as well. So that was really good. Fine. <laughs> Considering he doesn't take tours, he's done quite well on the channel, actually. <laughs> like uh, to get everyone involved. Absolutely. But uh, anyway, so yeah, it's been really nice for returning here and having a better look um, here at the rifle range in New Rendlesham Forest. That's it so as from exploring with Em and Stu and beyond the point and Ben's life we'll see you goodbye. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye. Bye.